Excellency, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, His Excellency, the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, will be joining us in a few minutes, and that's why there's a slight delay in the rendition of the national anthem. I'm very sure Chi and Shegmo Bay are ready to deliver at the appropriate time. Thank you very much. Let's be seated. Kindly rise for Mr. President. <laughs> okay, Mr. President is here. Shall we rise up and uh, we will call for the national anthem? We can then start.
Thank you, Mr. President, for joining us, Your Excellencies, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, Chi and Shagun, thank you very much. Thank you. You can step down now. Friends of Shagun call him a vocal terrorist. Thank you very much. Your Excellency, the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, President Muhammad Buhari, GCFI. Well, you're on live to the services of the Network Service of Nigerian Television Authority and National Anthem signals the commencement of the 14th Annual Banking and Finance Conference with the theme, Economic Recovery, Inclusion and Transformation, the role of banking and finance. This promises to be the largest gathering of the finance experts in Nigeria. It is also aimed at bringing up ideas, sharing experiences aimed at the right investment for the recovery of the nation's economy, not just for Nigeria, but also for Africa. NTA is here to bring you live the proceedings. It is a two-day event which commences now and will end tomorrow. And we have the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria as a special Guess. The event is actually an annual knowledge, touch sharing, and solution based forum for all stakeholders, talking about policy makers, regulators, operators, service providers, members of the academia, and clients in the financial services industry. It also provides a medium for practitioners within the industry and beyond to share experiences, exchange ideas, and provide pragmatic insight on contemporary issues affecting the sector and the economy. Invited guests, ladies and gentlemen, it is with pleasure that I welcome all of you to the 14th Annual Banking and Finance Conference organized by the Chartered Institute of Bankers of Nigeria. For 13 years, this conference have provided the atmosphere for stakeholders in the financial service industry to share experiences, exchange ideas, and prefer solutions to contemporary issues affecting not just the sector, but the economy in general. This year, the theme will be economic recovery, inclusion, and transformation, the role of banking and finance. Our present economic climate, impacted upon by the pandemic, by insecurity, and other sundry issues, demand conscious and committed efforts to facilitate a speedy economic recovery. And since independence, the banking industry has provided a basket of interrelated services to the Nigerian economy. So in the next two days, this conference shall be examining the role of banks in revitalizing the Nigerian economy. My name is Ebere Young. We have close to four anchors spread between Lagos and Abuja. With me here is a very young lady because the focus this year will also to encourage the millennials, the generation Y and Z to be part of the banking sector. Moji Sade Oshosaya is here. That's her, the delectable lady, the future of banking and the future of Nigeria standing here. Thank you very much, Barry, for that introduction. His Excellency, the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, His Excellency, the Vice President, I respectfully observe all of the protocols. My name is Mojiba Shosoye, and I'm delighted, honored, and very excited to be doing this today. I'm excited to be the co-anchor at the 14th Annual Banking and Finance Conference of the CIBN. It's my pleasure to be standing here today. Promises to be very, very educative, even as we get on conversations that shape Nigeria for a better future and Africa in general. Once again, I'd like to warmly welcome everyone to this conversation today and tomorrow. Thank you, Barry. And we have in Lagos, Lekon, and Akin. Thank you very much, Barry Young. Your Excellency is distinguished guest, all courtesies duly extended. It is my honor and privilege to be here today. 
And I'd like to announce to you in Abuja that Lagos is a god. The Mr. Governor, the Governor of Lagos State is here with us, with members of his cabinet, and of course, captains of industries. And perhaps the, ones which, the one which will excite you most is that this center is full of youths, the future of Nigeria, the future of banking. And so, like Cicero said, when there's hope in the future, there's power in the present. I'm happy to be here. Thank you very much, Akin. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Abiri Young. Thank you very much, uh, Akin, as well. Uh, it is a great privilege to stand here with uh, bankers. And I know that by the virtue of this 14th uh, annual conference of the Chartered Institute of Bankers of Nigeria, uh, the Nigerian economy is about to take a positive turn because what is here is not just a gathering of people, but a convergence of minds that will decide that the future is indeed now. Thank you very much. It's a great privilege to be here. Once again, from Lagos and in Lagos, I'd like to say welcome to His Excellency, the Executive Governor of Lagos State, the entire members of the cabinet, and the wonderful, distinguished ladies and gentlemen present in the hall today. Good morning. Thank you very much, Lekon. And so, Your Excellencies, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, let me now invite the President and Chairman of Council of CIBN, Dr. Bayo Olubemi, FCIB, for his welcome address. Our uh, time is uh, fast spent. We are working with a very tight schedule. Therefore, I will try as much as possible to skip protocols that will stand on the existing protocol. However, I must still give honor to whom honor is due. His Excellency, President Muhammad Dubuari, GCFR, President and Commander in Chief of the Armed Forces. Federal Republic of Nigeria, His Excellency, President Paul Kagame, President, Republic of Rwanda, His Excellency, Professor Yemi Oshiban Baju, GCUN, SAN, Vice President, the Federal Republic of Nigeria, Mr. Governor, Babajide Udushala Sanwolu, Executive Governor, Lagos State, Ms. Amina Mohamed OFR, Deputy Secretary General of the United Nations and Chairman of the UN Sustainable Development Group, Mrs. Zainab Shamsina Ahmed, Honorable Minister, Federal Minister of Finance, Budget and National Planning, Federal Republic of Nigeria, Alaji Muhammad Musa Belu, Honorable Minister, Federal Capital Territory, and Mr. Godwin MFLA, CON, FCIB. Governor Central Bank of Nigeria and our chief host. All other protocols duly observed, like I said, because we are working on a very tight uh, time frame. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, it is indeed a great honor and real privilege for me to welcome you all to this auspicious occasion, the 14th Annual Banking and Finance Conference of the Chartered Institute of Bankers of Nigeria with the theme, Economic Recovery, Inclusion, and Transformation, the Role of Banking and Finance. The conference is an annual platform for stakeholders in the banking and finance ecosystem, including policy makers, regulators, operators, top government functionaries at all levels, captains of industries, managing directors of banks and other financial institutions, business leaders, development partners, members of the diplomatic community, the academia, service providers, clients, and the banking public to share experiences and exchange insightful ideas on contemporary issues affecting the sector and the economy in general. The 14th edition of the conference has in, will, be, will be having in attendance over 10,000 participants across the diverse sectors of the economy with global representations to discuss elaborately the appropriate ways to propel the economy of our dear country, Nigeria, forward, and by extension, the continent of Africa. This event aims to deliver the much needed solutions 
that will drive economic recovery, inclusion, and transformation of our economy for greater value. Despite the obvious challenges faced by the economy, there are inherent opportunities to unleash the potential of our country and the entire continent of Africa. The foremost professional body, the CIBN is poised to develop its members' competencies through this program and contribute to the growth and sustainability of our economy. As a conscience of the industry, we are pressed to uphold ethics and professionalism in the financial services industry, and most importantly, to be part of the policy initiatives of relevant stakeholders for value creation. I am delighted, therefore, to welcome His Excellency President Muhammadu Buhari, GCFR, the President and Commander-in-Chief of the Armed Forces of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. We appreciate you immensely, sir, for taking our time to be part of this auspicious event, to address and declare the conference open. Also in our midst, today all it be virtually is His Excellency President Paul Kagame, President of the Republic of Rwanda, who is the conference keynote speaker, and whose address is expected to set the tone for this thought-led event. Your presence this morning is monumental in the annals of our highly revered institute, as this is the first time this conference will be hosting a foreign president. I also welcome heartily His Excellency Professor Yemi Oshibajo, GCON, SAN, Vice President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, a friend of our great institute. I thank you, sir, for accepting to grace the, the event with your esteemed presence once again, having been here, been here two years ago. Your presence, sir, here this morning is a testament of your strong support, not only for the banking and finance sector, but also for the sustained growth and development of our nation's economy. Let me extend my warm welcome to the Governor of the State of Excellence, Lagos State, a state where I have lived and worked for about 40 years, Mr. Babatunde Sanwolu, I can claim to be a Lagosian. The most business-friendly governor leading the most business-friendly state in Nigeria. In the same vein, I'd like to welcome and appreciate the chief host of this conference, the able and dynamic governor of Central Bank of Nigeria, our Mr. Godwin MFL, CON SCIB, a transformational leader under whose ages we have witnessed a series of social intervention schemes that have helped to rebound and shape the economy. I also welcome warmly all our distinguished speakers and resource persons who will be addressing this esteemed gathering to provoke our thoughts and provide in-depth insights on myriads of issues confronting us as a nation towards moving us to the promised land. This year's conference is a departure from the norm as a special focus is placed on the youths, the millennials, the Generation Y and Generation Z, considering the, 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 the strategic importance of this demography on people in this new dispensation of the digital economy. We recognize the fact that the youths are pivotal to the inclusivity and transformation that we seek as a nation. As such, they are here at this conference in their large numbers. I heartily congratulate the Conference Consultative Committee of the 14th Annual Banking and Finance Conference, ably led by Dr. Herbert Wigwe, FCIB, the um, MDCEO, Group MCO of Access Bank PLC, as well as the Chairman Committee of Bank CEOs, for the unbridled dexterity brought to bear in the organization and mode of delivery of this year's event. You have truly raised the bar. I want to thank you and your team, the co-chair, Sister Mishome from FCIB, MDCO, Unity Bank PLC, and Mr. Azan Usman, FCIB, MDCO, Jairus Bank PLC, as well as other members of the committee who have worked tirelessly. I want to say we sincerely appreciate your zeal, your commitment, and your passion for the growth and information and transformation of the economy. I welcome all delegates 
government functionaries, sponsors, and gentlemen of the press to this historic event. The conference concept, agenda, and purpose. Esteemed audience, we recall that several initiatives have been implemented by the current administration via its various agencies, including the Central Bank of Nigeria, over the past years to guide the economy back on course on the path of recovery. Year on year, we have gone from a contraction of 6% in GDP growth in the second quarter of 2020 to a 5% growth in the second quarter of 2021. While this progress is laudable and worthy of celebration, we recognize that there is more work to be done. There are macroeconomic issues which threaten to block the road to prosperity, such as high inflation and unemployment rates. There is also work to be done to ensure we meet targets regarding financial inclusion, infrastructural development, SME growth, and female equality, to mention but a few. This conference aims to dissect these numerous issues and generate sustainable solutions. We also aim to extract issues surrounding digital transformation and how such innovative solutions can be leveraged to generate sustainable African businesses, an inclusive financial ecosystem, and economic growth. Essentially, our aim over the next few days is to, to drive discussions that will lead to a very clear and actionable solutions for impact. As I mentioned earlier, we have carefully selected over 25 resource persons, some of the greatest minds across the globe who will be sharing their thoughts, insights, and experiences on the various subjects. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, it's imperative to stress that we are not simply holding a talk shop, which will be long forgotten after it is held. At the end of the event, a communique will be presented inclusive of all recommendations on and actionable steps based on the conversations from, this, uh, from the various sessions that we hold. Let me assert as usual that we take this very seriously and the outcome document will be disseminated to all stakeholders, policymakers, and participants. In conclusion, distinguished guests and delegates, let me conclude by remark, my remarks by thanking you all once again for joining us at this epoch-making event, physically and uh, virtually. Before I take my leave, May I encourage all our delegations in the physical locations, Abuja and Lagos, to, put, to observe all COVID-19 safety protocols as prescribed by the regulatory authorities. Permit me to leave you with a quote by Raghuram Rajan. The first step to prescribing the right medicine is to recognize Recording in the progress. of the illness. And when it comes to what is ailing the global economy, Extreme monetarism has been more cost than cure. The sooner we recognize that, the stronger and more sustainable the global economic recovery will be. I thank you all once again for your attention. Thank you, and God bless. Thank you very much, Dr. Bayo Olubemi, FCIB, the president and chairman of council CIBL. You know, now more than ever, I'm excited to be a youth. The focus is on youth. And I'm really looking forward to the conversations because I know that this is a, there are conversations that will be centered around pragmatic approaches to resolving the challenges we have in the economy. Thank you very much, sir, for your welcome address. As we move on very quickly, I'd like to invite the chief host for this conference. Please join me as I welcome the governor of the Central Bank of Nigeria for his goodwill message. A round of applause for Mr. Godwin Emefele, CON, FCIB. Thank you very much, sir. Yeah, His Excellency and President, Commander-in-Chief of the Armed Forces of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, President Muhammad Buhari, GCFR. His Excellency, the President of the Republic of Rwanda, President Paul Kagame. His Excellency, the Vice President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, Professor Yemi Oshibaju, 
CN, GCON. His Excellency, the Executive Governor of Legal State, Governor Babajide Shawulu, President and the other Executive Chartered Institute of Bankers, and other distinguished ladies and gentlemen, may I please stand on already established protocol. It is a pleasure to address the banking community at the 14th Annual Banking and Finance Conference being organized by the Chartered Institute of Bankers of Nigeria, CIBN. I have always looked forward to participating at events organized by the Chartered Institute of Bankers, as the organization has been a critical stakeholder in supporting Central Bank of Nigeria's efforts at promoting greater economic growth and continued stability of our financial system. I wish to specially thank the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, President Muhammad Buhari, for taking time out of his very, very busy schedule to participate in this event. Mr. President, sir, your presence today is reflective of your efforts at ensuring that the banking sector continues to act as a catalyst for growth in Nigeria and that it would also emerge as the leading financial center in Africa. We also extend our profound gratitude to, Pres to President Paul Kagame, President of Rwanda, for honoring the invitation of the Chartered Institute of Bankers of Nigeria. Your Excellency, your participation today is a testament of your continued efforts at strengthening intra-African trade and investments, which I believe is a requirement for greater good of all Africans. Let me also thank the leadership of the Chartered Institute of Bankers of Nigeria, led by its president, Mr. Bayo Olubimi, and his team for their relentless effort in ensuring the success of today's event. Finally, I want to acknowledge the managing directors and chief executive of our banks and other financial institutions who have all found time to attend this conference despite their very busy schedules. A year ago, I spoke at this, and I mean the 13th annual banking and finance conference, where I solicited the support of the banking community to address the unprecedented effects of COVID-19 pandemic on Nigeria's economy. I thank the banking community for listening and responding to our call as your support has been critical in aiding our recovery efforts thus far. We will continue to crave your support even going forward. The theme of today's conference, recovery, inclusion and transformation, the role of banking and finance is apt, especially given the unprecedented events of 2020, when compared along the measures put in place by policymakers to reverse a significant downturn in economic activities last year. Today, I hope to address the important role the banking community can play in fostering greater growth and stability to sectors significantly impacted by the virus, while also supporting investments in key sectors of our economy that could have a multiplier effect on growth. As we are all aware, the impact of the virus along with the 60% decline in crude price led to a precedented decline in government revenue, foreign exchange earnings, as well as output in key sectors of our economy, such as manufacturing and the services industries. As a result, the Nigerian economy fell into a recession during the third quarter of 2020 after two consecutive quarters of negative growth of minus 6.1% during the second quarter of 2020 and minus 3.6% during the third quarter of 2020. In response to this challenge, ladies and gentlemen, the Monetary and Fiscal Authority took unprecedented measures to prevent further decline in economic activities. Our first objective was to restore stability to the economy by providing assistance to households, individuals, small and medium enterprises, and large corporates that had been 
is severely impacted by the pandemic as well as by the lockdown measures. Secondly, working with banking community, we also sought to aid faster recovery of our economy through deployment of credit to operators in critical sectors of our economy, such as agriculture and manufacturing. Some of those measures include one, a one-year one extension of the moratorium on principal repayments for central bank intervention facilities. Two, regulatory forbearance was granted to banks to restructure loans given to sectors that were severely impacted by the pandemic. Three, reduction in interest rates on Central Bank of Nigeria intervention loans from 9 to 5%. Four, mobilization of key stakeholders in the Nigerian economy through COVID alliance, which led to the provision of over 23 billion naira in relief materials to affected households and the establishment and setup of 39 isolation centers across our country. The banking community was indeed instrumental to the success of the COVID Alliance in providing support to affected individuals and communities in Nigeria. We thank the banking community. Five, strengthening the loan to deposit ratio policy, which has resulted in a significant increase in loans provided by financial institutions to banking customers. Loans granted to private sector rose by 3 trillion naira between July 2020 and July 2021 because of the continued implementation of our LDR policy. Six, deployment of over 756 billion naira to 3.7 million farmers, smallholder farmers, cultivating over 4.6 million hectares of farmland under the, our Anchor Boras program. Seven, deployment of 440 billion naira to 711,706 beneficiaries under our agri business small and medium enterprise investment scheme, AXMIS, and the targeted credit facility, TCF, being run by the National Nusar Microfinance Bank. Eight, disbursement of 98.41 billion naira in loans to support 103 healthcare projects out of which 26 are pharmaceutical companies and 77 are healthcare institutions. These funds are helping to expand and strengthen the capacity of our healthcare institutions in Nigeria today. Nine, provision of two, 923 billion naira in loans to support 251 real sector projects, which has helped in boosting local manufacturing and production across critical sectors of our economy. Without that, Your Excellency, these measures helped to ensure the, that the recession was very brief as the economy emerged out of the recession by the fourth quarter of the year with a growth of 0.11% during the fourth quarter. Continued implementation of our interventions in the agricultural and manufacturing sectors improved availability of COVID-19 vaccines recovery in crude oil prices, along with a significant pickup in economic activities have led to a surge in our gross domestic product GDP output as our economy grew by 5.1% during the second quarter of 2021, up from 0.5% during the first quarter of 2021. Key sectors such as agriculture, manufacturing, trade, and ICT continue to witness growth, even though growth in the petroleum sector continues to be constrained by output pressures. Hopefully, with the passage and of passage and presidential assent to the Petroleum Industry Act, Nigeria is on the road to a new vista in the oil and gas sector again. On inflation, alongside the recession, we also saw inflation rise to a peak of 18.17% in March 2021, due to heightened disruptions in global and domestic supply chains because of COVID-19 pandemic, adjustments in the exchange rate, and heightened security issues in major food belts of the country. Reflecting several measures put in place by both the monetary and fiscal authorities, we have enabled Your Excellency to reverse this trend with inflation trending to 17.38% as of July 2021. 
which is now the fourth consecutive month of this decline. And we're hoping that hopefully before the end of the year, we might, we will certainly bring it down close to almost 15%. We do expect that the pace of inflation will continue to moderate in the following months as we approach the harvest season on banking sector. To prevent an economic crisis from spilling into a financial crisis, the CBN worked to protect the interest of depositors by ensuring that banks made adequate capital provisions to cover for unexpected losses. We also enabled banks to restructure their loans granted to individuals and businesses significantly affected by the pandemic. Our banks also demonstrated exceptional resilience by putting in place business continuity plans, along with the deployment of digital channels, which ensured that the provision of financial services to customers was not disrupted by the COVID-19 pandemic. We are delighted, Your Excellency, that these measures have paid off. Indeed, key indicators in the banking sector continue to reflect that our banking sector remains strong, resilient, and healthy. Capital adequacy ratio and liquidity ratio in the banking sector have remained above the prudential limit at 15.5 and 41.3% respectively. A non-performing loans ratio of the banking industry in July 2021 stood at 5.4%, reflecting continued improvements from 6% in September 2020. Our banking sector remains well positioned to support the recovery efforts of the monetary and fiscal authorities. Your Excellency, sir, clearly, Nigerian banks have become not only strong and resilient, but have also carved a good niche in the world. To consolidate on the growth and resilience of Nigerian banks in the last decade, Your Excellency, your Central Bank of Nigeria will, in the next 12 months, be establishing the Nigerian International Financial Center, N. IFC. The NIFC will act as an international gateway for capital and investments driven by technology, payment system infrastructure. This new financial hub will curate local and international banks to make them global champions. The NIFC will be a 24-7 financial center that will complement London New York and Singapore financial centers and enable an acceleration of our homegrown initiatives such as InfraCorp PLC, which Your Excellency gracefully approved earlier in the year, the 15 trillion naira infrastructure fund, which we hope will be launched in October 2021. The NIFC will also complement our initiatives on the Nigerian Commodity Exchange and the National Arts Theatre Creative Hubs for our youths, as well as our eNaira project, which is also expected to debut in October 2021. The NIFC will take advantage of our existing laws, such as the Bofia 2020, the NEBSA Act, and other central bank regulations to create a fully global investment and financial hub where monies, ideas, and technology will move freely without any hindrance. Digital connectivity. Our robust payment system has continued to evolve towards meeting the needs of households and businesses in Nigeria. Reflective of the confidence in our payment system, between 2015 and 2020, close to $500 million worth of funds have been invested in firms run by Nigerian founders. Notwithstanding these gains, Your Excellency, Close to 36% of adult Nigerians do not have access to financial services. Improving access to finance for individuals and businesses through digital channels can help to improve financial inclusion, lower the cost of transactions, and increase the flow of credit to businesses. It is in this vein that the Central Bank of Nigeria is working to deploy a central bank digital currency, which would help in attaining our goals of fostering great greater inclusion using digital channels, supporting cross-border payments for businesses and firms, as well as providing a reliable channel 
for remittance inflows into our country. When fully deployed, the eNERA will ensure that Nigerians in remote areas can conduct financial activities using their digital as well as feature and future phone devices. The support of the financial industry will be critical in the deployment of the eNERA and efforts are ongoing to encourage continued partnership between CBN and stakeholders on infrastructure finance. We are all aware of the critically criticality of infrastructure in fostering economic growth, yet Nigeria still has a huge gap to fill in this regard. That is the reason we believe the banking system must pay attention to providing long-term finance for infrastructure development of our country. With the decline in revenues due to federal and state government, government because of the drop in crude oil prices, Alternative and smart ways of funding infrastructure are critical if we are to generate sustained growth of our economy. In this regard, Your Excellency, I am pleased to announce that InfraCorp PLC, the infrastructure company being created by the Central Bank of Nigeria, African Finance Corporation, and the Nigerian Sovereign Investment Authority to raise 15 trillion naira will be unveiled in October. 2021. InfraCorp will en would enable the use of mostly private capital to support infrastructure investment that will have a multiplier effect on growth across critical sectors of our economy. The purpose of the 15 trillion naira being raised is to address some of our infrastructure needs while providing reasonable returns to our investors. We believe this well-structured fund can act as a catalyst for growth in the medium and the long run. Support of the banking system will be important in achieving this objective. Stimulating growth. It is therefore imperative from an economic as well as security perspective that our banking and financial system continue to support growth in sectors that have significant growth potential and can enhance the resilience of the Nigerian economy in the face of external shock. On agriculture, another key area of focus that would help support stronger growth of our economy is the agriculture sector. We have witnessed the disruptions of COVID-19 has had on global supply chains and food supply. These disruptions led to a significant surge in freight charges and a corresponding increase in global inflation. It is important that we continue to support measures that will increase productivity of agricultural sector and strengthen our resilience against externally induced shocks. The banking sector therefore has a significant role to play as a facilitator of growth through its intermediation efforts. Our outlook, your excellency sir, with continued improvements in the economy, I am optimistic that by the end of the year, our economy will not only close the output gap brought about by the 2020 recession, but that we would end the year with an annual GDP growth rate of between 2.5% to 3%, up from a negative 1.92% in 2020. Notwithstanding the positive news of your excellency, I would admit that growth remains fragile. We are not out of the woods yet, given the challenges in combating COVID-19 pandemic, and will therefore urge all stakeholders to remain vigilant to prevent the resurgence of the virus. The implementation of our various interventions need to be intensified so as to sustain the recovery and stimulate further growth of our economy. In concluding, Your Excellency, ladies and gentlemen, let me add that while we have been able to contain some of the effects of the COVID-19 pandemic on our economy, it is imperative that we work to build a more resilient economy that is better able to contain external shocks while supporting growth and wealth creation in key sectors of our economy. Proactive steps on the part of stakeholders in the banking and financial system in supporting the growth of sectors such as agri, ICT, and infrastructure will strengthen our ability to deal with the challenges that have been brought upon us by COVID-19 and by extension stimulate 
good growth of the Nigerian economy for Nigeria and Nigerians. I thank you most sincerely for your attention. Thank you very much, the Governor of the Central Bank of Nigeria. And we also want to thank you on behalf of the Nigerian economy for providing the requisite leadership that ensured, according to your word, that the Nigerian banks are critical stakeholders. They are solid, they are resilient in Project Nigeria. That was the Governor of the Central Bank of Nigeria there, Mr. Godwin M. Merfele, Putting, putting the facts straight and with a positive projection of 2.5% to 3% GDP growth rate a target by the end of the year 2021. Mr. Mefele also announced the Nigerian International Financial Center, which is in the offing in the next 12 months. It is a, supposed to be a financial hub that will offer financial services 24 hours around the clock, all to ensure that the financial services sector lives up to expectation, while the InfraCorp, along with IFC and other partners, will be channeling 15 trillion naira into the infrastructure sector. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. So you know this is an international audience, and so Lagosians will have to behave. <laughs> the Excellency, the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, President Muhammad Buhari, GCFR. Your Excellency, President Paul Kagame, the President of the Republic of Rwanda. Your Excellency, Professor Yemi Oshibaju, GCON, the Vice President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Let me acknowledge ministers in the House, the Governor of Central Bank, and most especially, the President and Chairman of Council of the Chartered Institute of Bankers of Nigeria, my brother and my friend, Dr. Bayo Olubemi, FCIB, other many distinguished audience, captains of our industries, both in Lagos, in Abuja, and the Villa, and in Kigali. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. President, in the hall here in Lagos, you have a team of young, vibrant, dedicated, inclusive, <laughs> articulate bankers, and young men in various sectors of our economy that has come to grace this occasion, the 14th Annual Conference for the, for the Chartered Institute of Bankers. Let me express how truly grateful we are that I've been asked to make a few comments at this year's Annual Banking and Finance Conference. This, for me, it's homecoming, given the fact that I was once in this sector and in this industry. And so seeing all my colleagues and the great things they're doing for our citizens and for our country, I cannot both continue to commend this sector. And so the themes for this year's conference, which is economic recovery, inclusion, and transformation, the role of banking and finance is definitely very apt as the world grapples the very, very dangerous and very deadly coronavirus pandemic the struggle to rebuild and to restore a disrupted economy. Unfortunately, Mr. President, ladies and gentlemen, the pandemic is still very much with us, which means that we must continue to tackle it even as we try to mitigate its impact in our lives, in our livelihoods, and in our society. The banking industry, no doubt, have played a significant role in the economic recovery that we'll, we'll, we are seeing today. Let me take us back about five, about six, seven decades ago, precisely July 1944, when more than 40 countries assembled at the now historic conference in the United States to establish the International Monetary Fund and the World Bank as financial institutions to help the world at that time and Europe after the Second World War. These financial institutions were set up 
to rebuild and to recover from the devastation of that war. Loans were given to countries in Europe and in other parts to rebuild after that war. And many may not even remember that the World Bank contributed to the reconstruction of a lot of economy and, and countries, which led to the emergence of the Marshall Plan of 1948. This is a kind of a transformational role that Nigerian banking system is expected to play, especially after the COVID-19 pandemic. Recent data from the Central Bank indicates that they have disbursed well over 400 billion to over 650,000 households as soft loans to help households to cope with the impact of the pandemic. This is apart from the combined hundreds of billions that has been dedicated to various sectors in manufacturing, in healthcare, aviation, tourism, and other critical sectors of the economy. I'm sure as we've listened to the speech from the CBN governor, several, several interventions we have seen in the last 18 months. We must therefore especially commend the Central Bank of Nigeria for taking the lead in this regard and for setting a good example for the entire country. Mr. President, let me also commend your own great leadership by setting up the presidential task force that has worked tirelessly with all states and had helped us to be able to address and attack the pandemic. COVID is also another very good example of what is possible, what the banking industry can do, because they all came together with the organized private sector. They made investments in healthcare and in distribution of not only palliatives, they were able to help subnationals to build capacity in isolation centers, in testing centers, and in all pharmaceutical um, protocols, which has helped us <clears throat> significantly to reduce the stem of the pandemic. Mr. President, I'm sure you are aware that even the WHO says that Nigeria's response to the pandemic were one of the top five in the world. And I think we all deserve a round of applause for that. Lagos on its own during this period has tested over 400,000, which were all free tests, which has cost the state government billions of naira, but we're indeed happy that as we continue to remain the epicenter, we're on the convergence of ensuring that we beat and we, re we, we completely beat the third wave that we currently have. We also want to commend the creative industry initiative that the committee of bankers have put together, which we're seeing the renovation and the redevelopment of the National Arts Theater, which is a world-class creative park we believe we'll be bringing, you know, our film industry, our music industry, our fashion and our IT industry together. This redevelopment is ongoing and I must commend both the Bankers Committee and also thank all the teaming youth that are also in this hall and in Abuja because once that infrastructure is completely renovated, we'll see the real inclusiveness, inclusiveness that we talk about that will help our teaming youth that will help the creative industry and that will help, you know, our MSMEs to see that their rightful space is being given to them. And so we need to do a whole lot more. We need to be able to build back and build better, even coming out of this pandemic. And we're beginning to lay the foundation for a long-term economic resilience. The challenge of poverty, I'm sure we all know, predates COVID-19. And even as we focus on defeating the, the, the pandemic, we certainly should not forget that the, the entire world is still faced with a lot of poverty, we're still faced with inequality, we're faced with the issues around climate change, and so we cannot rest on our oars. Your Excellency, Mr. President, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, more than ever before, we need the banking industry and the financial institutions to step up with new innovative financing mechanism and solutions that will focus on marginalized and are vulnerable in different parts of our life. And they can help them support, you know, and bring them out of poverty, you know, and all of the issues around inequality that we have 
in our environment and help public institutions so that we can build a world class that we believe will be just, that will be fair, will be equitable in all respects. I commend the CBN for the initiative around the infrastructure funds that they are trying to put together, and I believe that it will help both the national and subnational to be able to build back quicker, better, and faster. And I want to also commend, Mr. President, the audience that we have in Lagos here. We have a very large number of our youth in the fintech industry, in the business, and in the commerce industry. They're all here in large numbers, and I want to thank them for that. And so we want to challenge and expect that in the next two days, this conference will deliberate in depth that will bring about solutions that will come up with workable recommendations or that will help us implement the recovery that we've all talked about. I want to thank again, very sincerely, the president and chairman in council of CIBN, my brother, Dr. Bayo Lubemi, and of course, my brother, my friend, Herbert Wigwe, who is chairing the organizing committee today for inviting me because we believe that at the end of this exercise, not only will our country be on the right pedestal for growth and recovery, but the youth, you know, the young people that we're all talking about will indeed see that we're doing this together with them, with them in the room with us. Thank you very much, and we look forward to the end of this conference. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much, Your Excellency, the Executive Governor of Lagos State, Mr. Babajide uh, Songwo Lu. Thank you very much for your bold and uh, courageous positions in the face of uh, the challenges you've mentioned, especially the pandemic uh, in uh, the country, and for leading Lagos to champion great records concerning tackling these challenges. And now, uh, from Thank you very much. Thank you very much. All right, thank you very much once again, Your Excellency, the Executive Governor of Lagos State. You know, I can say confidently that the banking sector has produced very incredible talent because I'm one of them. I'm an ex-banker. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'll quickly like to recognize the presence of the Managing Director of the NDIC. Thank you very much for joining us, Mr. Belu Hassan. You know, one of the things that the pandemic, the COVID-19 pandemic has done was to hasten the transformation of the world into a digital economy. Today, our keynote speaker will be joining us virtually. He is the President of the Republic of Rwanda. Ladies and gentlemen, it's my honor on this beautiful day at the opening ceremony of the 14th Annual Banking and Finance Conference to welcome on the screen His Excellency, President Paul Kagame, President, Republic of Rwanda. Thank you very much. Thank you, President Mohamedou Buhari, leaders and members of the Chartered Institute of Bankers of Nigeria, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, let me start by congratulating you for this 14th Annual Banking and Finance Conference. Thank you, Herbert Wigwe, for the invitation. Although I'm unable to join you physically, I'm honored to offer a few thoughts on the critical importance of this sector for our continent. The COVID pandemic has affected every aspect of our economies. But the pandemic also presents an opportunity for Africa's banks to play a leading role in making our societies more resilient and more responsive to the needs of our people. Whatever affects business affects banking. Financial services are the engine of private sector development. Banks are crucial for allocating the capital wisely and productively. Indeed, Africa has the resources to fund its own economic growth and reduce dependency on 
external resources. To stay competitive, there is the need to keep integrating new technology into banking to increase financial inclusion and access. Banking can't just be a service for elites. The African continental free trade area is creating new opportunities for an African trade and investment. Banks with the continental reach, like several of the institutions represented here, can lead the way in cementing economic integration. Finally, the banking sector, more than any other, understands the importance of integrity and good customer service. Banking is ultimately about trust. We look to, to set the pace in this regard. Our role as governments is to maintain good enabling environments, protecting both shareholders and consumers while allowing for innovation. We expect you to keep challenging us on this role. Once again, I wish you a productive conference and thank you for your invaluable contributions as African bankers, serving African businesses and families. We look forward to working together to build a more resilient and prosperous Africa for all. I thank you. <clears throat> we want to say thank you to His Excellency, the President of Rwanda, President Paul Kagame, for finding time to join us here. Your Excellency. President Paul Kagame of Rwanda, keeping it short, simple, and precise, uh, pointing out that financial and banking services shouldn't be exclu exclusive of just the elite, but should be an all-encompassing practice and target for even the low-class people in the societies. And so he is advising African banks to play a critical role in re-engineering growth and economic prosperity on the continent, as well as leading the way through the AFCFTA for financial integration and deepening inclusion on financial services. Ladies and gentlemen, it's therefore my honor and pleasure to welcome here His Excellency President Muhammad Buhari GCFA. Excellency, the Vice President, Federal Republic of Nigeria, Excellency, the Governor of Lagos State, members of the National Assembly, Governor, Central Bank of Nigeria, President and members of the Chartered Institute of Bankers of Nigeria, Senior Government of Shares, distinguished invited guests, ladies, and gentlemen, it is an honor for me to join you at this 14th Annual Banking and Finance Conference organized by the Chartered Institute of Bankers of Nigeria with the theme, Economic Recovery, Inclusion, and Transformation, the role of banking and finance. I salute the Institute and the entire banking and finance industry for the commitment to charting a practical path for economic recovery and transformation of our country, Nigeria, and by extension, Africa, as epitomized by the theme of your conference. I commend the financial services industry for its interventions and contributions towards the promotion of financial inclusion and literacy in our country. And more importantly, the roles played by the banks in fostering economic growth 
of the country. I am confident that the speakers that have been carefully selected to contribute to conference will share insights that will help individuals, businesses, and governments at all levels make necessary adjustments and take the right steps towards our collective resolve to position Nigeria as one of the top economies in the world. The COVID-19 pandemic, as you all know, has changed everything around us. From the way we interact to the way we work, communicate, and indeed our general lifestyle. Much as the pandemic has caused unprecedented disruption, it has also triggered new opportunities which have helped to reshape the economy in the areas of digital transformation, trans-African trade, financial inclusion, security, workforce of the future, pharmaceutical, manufacturing, processing supply, and logistics. I therefore implore you to leverage the abundant business opportunities to grow the economy. A recent report from the National Bureau of Statistics revealed that Nigeria's gross domestic product grew 5.01% in the second quarter of 2021, the strongest rise since the first quarter of 2014. This is sharing news and an indication that the efforts of this administration at repositioning the economy is failing off. As we look beyond the effects of the pandemic to the future, there are bountiful opportunities ahead of us. As you all may know, the African continental free trade area of which Nigeria is subscribed is not only an opportunity for the growth of trade, but also the growth of pan-African businesses. It foretends opportunities for our team youth population, the women, the creative industry, the digital economy, the, the financial services sector, agricultural value chain, commerce, industry, education, and indeed every aspect of the economy as Nigerians will have unfettered access to the over 1.3 billion consumer market. In such instances, we all have a role to play in making sure the Nigerian small and medium enterprises are fit for, for purpose. Financial institutions, in particular, are expected to adequately play vital roles in the full implementation of the agreement. Indeed, financial intermediary could not be any more relevant than a time like this. We need you, the banks, to drive value creation by developing new technologies, scaling payment infrastructure to serve the diversified economies expected to benefit from this agreement. As much as we need financial intermediation, we also need technological innovation. In today's business train dis disrupted by COVID-19, Digital transformation has become a watchword for survival. Essentially, financial transactions, trade in goods and services are delving into full digitalization to stay afloat. 
most transactions are now online given the advent of the internet of things. As we continue to progress towards the next frontiers of digitization, we must harness all opportunities while being mindful of the inherent risks. For example, the protection of data is now of uttermost importance to provide users with more secure access to the online space. Let me now alert that we are committed to enhancing the health and economic well-being of all Nigerians. To reach our targets, I am pleased to mention some notable achievements of this administration as follows. Infrastructure. Last year, I approved establishment of InfraCo PLC, a world-class infrastructure development vehicle wholly focused on Nigeria with combined debt and equity take of capital of 15 trillion naira, managed by an independent infrastructure fund manager. B Power, Polar Power Niger project was launched in April 2021 with the aim of delivering 5 million off-grid solar connection to Nigerian households. In May 2021, the Rural Electrification Agency announced the planned deployment of solar power grids to 200 primary health centers and 104 unity schools nationwide. See, housing under the Family Homes Fund Limited, social housing program incorporated by the federal government of Nigeria, more than 2,000 hectares of land whose titled documents have been issued by 24 states with the capacity to accommodate about 65,000 new homes. The Central Bank of Nigeria is providing a 200 billion Naira financing facility with a guarantee by the federal government. D, agriculture. Some of the various initiatives embarked upon to boost agricultural trade in Nigeria includes the Enka Barobos program, which the Central Bank of Nigeria has made more than 300 billion naira available to more than 3.1 million smallholder farmers of 21 different commodities. These commodities include rice, wheat, maize, cotton, cassava, poultry, soybeans, groundnuts, fish, cultivating over 3.8 million hectares of farmland. It is on record that 80% of rice consumed in Nigeria are now produced locally. Poverty alleviation. The National Social Investment Program is the largest of such programs in Sub-Saharan Africa and one of the largest in the world. Currently, the National Social Register of Poor and Vulnerable Nigerians has 32.6 million persons from more than 7 million poor and vulnerable households identified from this number, 1.6 million poor and vulnerable households comprising more than 8 million individuals are currently benefiting from the conditional cash transfer program, which pays a bi-monthly stipend of 10,000 Naira per household. Creativity. Specifically, I must commend the establishment of the Creative in financing initiative by the Central Bank of Nigeria in collaboration 
with the Bankers Committee to provide single digit financing to young Nigerians in the fields of fashion, film, music, and information technology. Let me reiterate that we are committed to lifting our people out of poverty and would continue to embark on initiatives that will ensure we achieve this laudable objective. As Mark Twain said, and I quote, continuous improvement is better than delayed perfection. We will continue to engage with the various stakeholders in the Nigerian project as we together build a future forward Nigeria. Once again, I wish you very fruitful and engaging conference. Thank you very much. Let me invite Tunde and Chief Wigley as we sign off, His Excellency the President, with the national anthem. Very quickly, very quickly. Shall we rise now for the national anthem? Very much, Your Excellency, the President, for being part of this year's conference. We appreciate you. We also say thank you to the President of Rwanda for joining us. Thank you very much, Your Excellency, the President. Let's be seated, please. Your Excellencies, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, our next speaker is the Chairman of the Conference Consultative Committee. He has a bank that tells you that they offer you more than banking. But the reason why I'm going to invite the young lady who's working with me to introduce him is the fact that there's a payoff line in their advert that says, with us, Access Bank, tomorrow is here. And this is tomorrow. Mwini. Thank you very much, Eberi, for that very amazing introduction. Yes, you are right. Tomorrow is here. The youth, we are tomorrow. And you know, Access Bank always says something, take it tomorrow today, very interesting. It's my honor and privilege, ladies and gentlemen, at the 14th annual CIBN conference, Banking and Finance Conference, to invite the Chairman Conference Consultative Committee, the Group Managing Director and CEO, Access Bank PLC, and he's also the Chairman Body of Bank CEO. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me as I welcome Dr. Herbert Kwe. Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, first of all, thank you all so very much for being here. Never has it been more critical, at least not in a hundred years, for us to bring our expertise, our experience and ideas to what is arguably the most important conference in our calendars this year. So let me on behalf of the Governing Council of the Chartered Institute of Bankers, as well as the entire banking industry, 
express my most profound gratitude to His Excellency, the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, President Muhammadu Buhari, GCFR, Commander-in-Chief of the Armed Forces of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, for making our time this morning at this monumental conference. Your presence here speaks to the unwavering commitment of your administration and to the growth and economic transformation of Nigeria and Africa as a whole. May I, in the same vein, extend our sincere appreciation to His Excellency President Paul Kagame, the President of the Republic of Rwanda, who, against all odds, was able to make it a point of duty to attend this conference. And it is clearly as a symbol of his love and desire for a united, enterprising, and prosperous Africa that we can all be truly proud of. We must sincerely appreciate your esteemed presence and the valuable insights you have shared with us on this platform this morning. I'm also deeply grateful to Your Excellency the Vice President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, who is here physically, Professor Yami Oshimbanjo, GCON, SAN, for graciously accepting to join us at this conference physically. I think he deserves a round of applause. Your disposition and support for our industry, sir, as an indispensable agent of transformation is indeed praiseworthy. And it has helped us to question the effects of COVID-19 pandemic, as well as start to grease the wheel of progress. I must thank the president, sorry, I must also thank the governor of the Central Bank of Nigeria, without whom, first of all, none of this would be possible. You know, it cannot be easy managing the calendars of these very big men. Putting together the president, calling the vice president, and of course making sure our central bank governor is present is certainly not an easy thing. I must also thank the governor of Lagos State. He is an ex-banker, but continues to show great affinity for our industry, and little wonder why his state continues to make the kind of progress it does with over 23 million people. Your Excellency, thank you very much for continue, your continued support, and we will all continue to support you during, during your period of stewardship in Lagos. Let me thank the President and Chairman of Council, the Chartered Institute of Bankers of Nigeria, Dr. Bayo Olubemi, who is our host, for providing the leadership that he has, and the, the fact that he has continued to foster innovation that has ignited the creative sparks, some of which we're going to witness today and tomorrow. Charity, they say, begins at home. And so I will warmly appreciate my colleagues, managing directors, CEOs of banks, several of whom are present here. And I know it's not just because our central bank governor is here, but because they also mean well, and they think that the youth represent not just our future, also our today, and we need to make our time over the next two days to come up with very meaningful deliberations that will move our great country forward. To my co-chairs on the conference consultative committee, Mrs. Tomi Shumefu, who is joining us virtually. Tomi had to travel inevitably, and she's the managing director of Unity Bank. Mr. Hassan Usman, managing director, CEO of Jais Bank, and several, several, several of the indefatigable members of the committee who have toiled to make this happen. Your Excellency, it might interest you to know that as we speak, we probably have about 10,000 people who have joined us virtually, and I'm talking of youth, the young people. I think we should clap for them. It is a very big effort, and the fact that they're all joining us to make sure we move our country forward means that in spite of COVID, great things will come out of our country. Let me especially welcome all our distinguished speakers and resource persons who are poised to provoke our thoughts and trigger the force that will propel us out of inertia. Indeed, this conference will be meaningless without several of you. Some of them are joining us from overseas. Some are going to be physically present. I just want to thank you all so, so very much for making it. To all our sponsors and everyone who has contributed to make this conference a reality, 
I thank you for your invaluable contributions. I appreciate the youth, the millennials. Some of us still remain millennials. It has nothing to do with age. <laughs> generator Y, Generator Z, for all being part of this part of this conference and joining this conversation, both physically and on the virtual platform. In the words of Henry Frederick Emil, thankfulness is the beginning of gratitude, and gratitude is the completion of thankfulness. We most sincerely appreciate all of you. I believe we are at the threshold of a new and very exciting era, and the pandemic has forced us all to pause and think. Many new and innovative ideas are surfacing around the world. If we imagine before the pandemic, we would not have been able to have about 10,000 people or 12,000 people at this event. But something good has come out of it. But I believe we'll, we can and we will come out stronger, smarter, and more innovative than ever before. This conference is a gathering of some of the best banking and finance brains in Africa. And I encourage you all to discuss, postulate, imagine, and begin transformations or conversations that will transform Nigeria into the great nation that we can be. But as we begin these conversations, the biggest danger that we all face is focusing on what we were instead of focusing on what we need to become and what we need to do to go there. May you, make, may you all make the best of the next two days. Ni never has Nigeria and Africa needed us all so much. May I, on this note, ask this esteemed audience to join me and respectfully welcome Your Excellency, the Vice President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, Professor Yemi Oshibajo, to make his remarks. Thank you. Thank you very much. Please sit. Excellency, the governor of Lagos State, Mr. Babajude Sanwolu, uh, the governor of the Central Bank, Mr. Godwin Emefiele, our host and president, chairman of the Council of the Chartered Institute of Bankers of Nigeria, Dr. Bayo Olubemi, the chairman, conference consultative committee, and group managing director, CEO, Access Bank PLC, Dr. Herbert Wigwe, Your Excellencies of the Diplomatic Corps, members of the Chartered Institute of Bankers of Nigeria present, captains of industry, honored guests, ladies and gentlemen. It is such a great pleasure to participate at another <clears throat> bankers conference, the 14th. And I must say that I really like uh, bankers' conferences. They are always so encouraging. Uh, bankers, as you know, always look good, no matter how things are looking. <laughs> and they are sharp business suits, ladies and gentlemen, bankers. They just look recession-proof. <laughs> so I'm, I'm glad to be here. But I must say that your confidence and your optimism is a patriotic act. Not, it's not just a reflection of the fact that, yes, there is plenty of opportunity and plenty to do, but it's also a patriotic act. And uh, talking of patriotism, you know, uh, one of the most patriotic Nigerians I know is my dear younger brother, uh, the CBN governor, Godwin Emefiele. I'm sure you noticed I'm sure you noticed that I said, emphasized younger brother. He just turned 60 a few days ago. So really is a very young man. And I'll tell you a story why I think he's very patriotic. One day while on an official trip to the UK, I and a couple of other people who are on my team 
stopped over at a store, a Thai store. We wanted to buy a few green ties for Independence Day dinner. I walked into the place and asked for green ties because there were none. And the gentleman who was there attending to us said that uh, the CBN governor had come and bought all the green ties. <laughs> That's one of the ones he's wearing today. So. <laughs> it is such a great time. So I'm glad uh, to be here. But I must say, you know, and of course, every one of us will admit that the past few years, I've seen some of the most um, significant economic shocks in our history. We've had the misfortune of experiencing two recessions in about four and a half years largely due to external shocks, notably from the oil sector and now from the health sector with COVID-19. So while we must commend ourselves for quickly exiting both recessions and even seeing a 5.01 GDP growth bounce back in the last quarter, we've experienced a deepening of poverty and unemployment. So if there's any issue that must be front and center of policy and action today, it must be lifting millions out of poverty, creating jobs and opportunities for our young and restless population. Every macroeconomic and government policy must be subjected to the question, what will its impact be on poverty and jobs? So this is why the theme of this conference is particularly important, economic recovery, inclusion, and transformation the role of banking and finance. And I think we should emphasize that, the role of banking and finance. So in the next few minutes, hopefully uh, challenge our banking and financial sector to step up to the plate and play its part. And this sector has a large part to play. First, because we know that countries with well-developed financial systems experience faster economic growth, and as such are better able to engineer accelerated exit out of poverty for many. Second, according to a McKinsey report, despite COVID, Africa's banking sector is fast growing and nearly twice as profitable as the global average. To be fair, uh, over the years, the banking and finance industry in Nigeria has supported national economic development in so many ways. It has provided good paying jobs to a large number of Nigerians and contributed to growth in economic activities through path-breaking innovations. And as you've heard from the president and also from the CBN governor, several innovative interventions that have greatly helped in ensuring that we're able to sustain some of the, uh, some of the progress that's been made through the years and able to make even some appreciable progress uh, despite the challenges of COVID-19 and other external shocks. But clearly, we're far away from where we ought to be. So what needs to be done? I believe that it is time for the banking sector to take on some of the transformative big ticket items that would fundamentally transform our economy. Such matters, for example, as consumer finance, but housing finance in particular. The link between housing, housing finance, and economic development is already well established. And there is an interesting AFDB survey, which uh, I think is currently on their website, that provides great material on this point. And I've used it quite extensively in this particular contribution. The housing sector, they say, may support poverty reduction and inclusive growth in two general ways. First, housing construction contributes to economic output, creates employment, and generates a demand for materials and related services. Second, improved housing raises the standard of living of occupants. That study that I referred to, the AFDB study, says, for example, that the benefits of housing for individuals accrue in large part through better health and sanitation. And of course, this improves the overall human capacity of, of our citizens and of those who are able to own these houses. Housing also generates large multiplier effects in terms of employment and output. Employment, of course, is created for both skilled and poorer unskilled workers. The evidence also suggests that there is a symbiotic relationship 
between housing finance and the financial sector development. So housing finance helps to develop the financial sector itself and thus contributes to economic growth. So these were the justifications that we also advanced for the mass housing initiative in our economic sustainability plan. And if you read the plan, you'll find that these justifications are the same ones that we deployed, especially with respect uh, to uh, a mass housing program. But the challenge for full implementation of our mass housing program remains that the finance sector appears shy or simply have not found the right housing finance model that will work. Because we don't have a functional mortgage market, we are way behind in home ownership for that reason. And our economy is effectively left out or perhaps the most reliable source of generating capital for individuals. And I must admit that the task is, cannot be for banks alone. There are issues around appropriate uh, pricing of mortgages. Today, given uh, treasury bill rates, banks would rather take those safe investments. Mortgages will then have to be at a premium significantly higher than treasury bill rates. Banks have also argued that sterilizing their assets as non-interest bearing cash reserves plus income rates at 0.5 uh, impairs not just liquidity, but also return on assets. But in fairness to the CBN, and I will uh, mention this shortly, they've allowed the use of bank CRR to support and de-risk development projects. And I'll talk about one of those uh, uh, shortly. Then there are also land titling issues, problems associated with perfecting property titles, which are problems that only state governments can solve. We've been working on these issues with several state governments, in particular, some of the best work we've done has been with Lagos and Kano under ease of doing business initiatives. But there is still so much uh, ground to be covered. Another issue which I think must engage your attention are some of the game-changing interventions that the financial sector can make in the light of the extensive implications of climate change mitigation. The world is committed to zero emissions by 2030. One of the chief considerations, especially for developing countries, is how to pay for the massive transition to renewable energy. How do we pay for moving from where we are, especially fossil fuel-based fossil fuel uh, uh, fuel power sources to renewable energy? This is a significant challenge, but it's also an enormous opportunity. So the federal government established an integrated solar strategy for the electrification of 5 million households, serving about 25 million Nigerians in our economic sustainability plan. The CBN set aside 150 billion for the program, made available, as I had said earlier, through the bank CRR via a program that is administered by the bank. The program has three core objectives, expanding energy access to 25 million, uh, individuals has 5 million connections, increasing local content in the off-grid solar value chain, and creating about 250,000 jobs. The program is targeted at three key players, including uh, assemblers. These are manufacturers and distributors and the vertically integrated off-grid companies. So what the program wants to do is to be able to offer cheap finance to these categories uh, of developers, either the manufacturers or the off-grid suppliers, and quite a few others who, are, who will be able to play in this market, given the large, uh, the very large size of the program. There are two proposed mechanisms for the disbursement of the low-cost funding to component manufacturers and off-grid companies under the program. This includes, uh, for the component manufacturers, direct lending through selected commercial banks or local development finance institutions, such as the BOI you know, and uh, the uh, Development Bank of Nigeria, etc. Now, these, the second is for off-grid companies, direct lending from local development finance institutions to uh, solar home system distributors and mini-grid developers through a CBN credit facility, which is collateralized by pledged revenues and repaid, repaid through cash sweeps. 
So the federal government also provided subsidies of up to 20 to 30 percent for each successful installation through the Rural Electrification Agency program, NEP, to further de-risk these transactions. The NEP program has been going on for the past two years with record collections of 90 percent and, ab and above, in some cases, for the NEP solar developers, showing a relatively, a relatively low risk track record. But despite these efforts from the federal government, there's been very little uptake by the commercial banks to catalyze uh, installations or manufacturing for the solar power project. The Pioneer transaction is a partnership between Sterling Bank and the Niger Delta Power Holding Company that saw the and uh, the NDPHC provide further risk guarantees to get the project through. But at least that is, is on. The challenge of on, uh, under electrification of the rural and the poor and its associated, imp associated impact on our economic well being and security cannot be overstated. The climate change challenge is, is, is a massive one in more ways than one. And I would certainly like to encourage the Bankers Committee to refocus on supporting uh, the solar power program to ensure that in the next few months we can catalyze access to the 150 billion and create 5 million connections that can multiply to eliminating our electricity access deficit and creating jobs. Aside from, from, from uh, these two uh, major projects, we are on the cusp of uh, adopting our new medium-term development plan. The banking and finance sector is expected to help mobilize the additional resources that the public sector requires for plan execution. Moreover, given its traditional role of financial intermediation, the banking sector has a critical role to play in providing the capital required for the private sector to drive economic growth. I'll only add that the sector should also introduce more long-term and patient financial arrangements and instruments which are essential for building infrastructural facilities and factories needed for this great uh, structural transformation. Government is already playing its part in this regard through the establishment of development banking institutions, such as the Bank of Industry, uh, the Development Bank of Nigeria, and special purpose vehicles, as you've heard, like uh, the Infrastructure Corporation of Nigeria, Infraco, and the Investing in Digital and Creative Enterprises program, which we're implementing uh, with the AFDB. Going forward, the banking and finance sector must take advantage of the new opportunities that are opening up and also adapt to domestic and international developments. The rapid changes in the technology sector mean that financial technology companies and payment service companies are now an inescapable part of the financial landscape. To start with, banks must leverage, I think, the, uh, uh, the NIPS, uh, the Nigerian International uh, Interbank Settlement System, and BVNs to their advantage, as both are sources of data and of secure transactions. One particular area in which these advantages can be used is the provision of credit to business and individuals. The availability of the data on clients across the banking sector enabled the Central Bank of Nigeria to issue the global standing instruction policy, which makes it possible for banks to recover their loans from recalcitrant borrowers by attaching their funds in other banks. This policy should significantly reduce the risk of non-performing loans and enable banks to begin to extend personal and business loans on a much wider basis. Financial inclusion is, of course, critical to the objectives of recovery, of inclusion, and transformation. Access to financial services, especially in this COVID era, is particularly important for the poor and more vulnerable sections of society so that they can keep their micro-businesses alive and handle risks and uncertainty. And again, we must commend the CBN, the Bankers Committee, and the CIBN, for the efforts made uh, towards developing the Shared Network Expansion Facility, SANEF. And this facility, of course, as you know, is one that has worked very well, especially in incorporating 
mobile uh, payment technology firms into the whole uh, corpus of our banking and financial sector. And it has helped a great deal in ensuring that you don't need to uh, get a banking license before you're able to participate one way or the other. I'm also, uh, also acknowledge the banking sector for the very critical role that you played in the delivery of the federal government social investment programs by making it easier to make payments to beneficiaries of the scheme across the country in several locations that otherwise would have been unreachable. However, there is a lot more that needs to be done. 39% of current banking agents are in rural areas, only 39%. One obvious way uh, to rapidly scale up financial inclusion is clearly to leverage mobile technology. And the more room that we can give to these payment systems, the better for us all. So making a headway in this context entails innovation and cross-sectoral collaboration between banking and telecommunications sectors, especially with regard to providing products that are tailored to different customer segments. I've, I've had a few uh, tension-filled meetings between uh, the banking uh, sector and the telecommunications companies. Uh, I suspect that the bankers think that the telcos are about to take their lunch, so they are generally very, uh, they're, they're very skeptical about the, about the way that uh, the telcos come into the financial sector. But inclusion demands are coming up with products that are diverse and heterogeneous. And the truth is that this banking and financial space must be open to others now. In any event, technology is going to make it inev inevitable that that is the case. So as part and parcel of this effort, banks should work with governments and other stakeholders to promote financial literacy so that people have knowledge, uh, the knowledge that they need to make the right financial decisions. I think banks must also step up to the plate in the context of the uh, African continental free trade area. And one of the reasons why I think that this is important, and I think the involvement of banks, especially at the negotiation stage, as we negotiate now rules of origin and other, uh, and other segments of the negotiation that will impact the way that we enforce and the way that we carry out our own, uh, that we're able to take advantage of the free trade area agreements. I think that banks must, at this stage, come into that process of negotiation and be with our negotiators as, because quite a few of the advantages, especially with respect to services, is going to really belong to the banking sector. So the, we think that the, uh, content, the increasing trade, of course, means increasing opportunity. So the AFCTA means more trade and it means obviously more opportunities. And of course, uh, especially for cross-border uh, payments. We already have a fairly visible presence of Nigerian banks across Africa, with the likes of Access, UBA, Zenith Bank, I believe GTB in several countries. And there's no reason why we cannot expand on this using the opportunity provided by the uh, free trade agreements. Similarly, it will be important to develop interregional and continental payment systems to facilitate the expected increase in goods and services under these uh, free trade agreements. And one expects that the proposed Pan-African Payments and Settlement Platform being established by Afrex Bank will garner the necessary support from uh, the finance industry so that we can at least have a system that works for uh, cross-border payments across Africa. As I close, uh, permit me a little reflection. I think that banking has been one of the most stable industries through the centuries. Not much seems to change from one, uh, from one uh, phase to the other. But the next decade, and it may be sooner, promises to bring about the most fundamental changes that we have seen yet. And I think that this is evidence from the rise of uh, fintech companies, the role of digital currency, whether issued by reserve banks or crypto, blockchain technology, the increasing role of venture capitalists especially in providing equity for startups. The, pres the, the preference of these companies for equity rather than, debt, rather than debt may be worth thinking about. Because clearly, I mean, there is today 
the venture capitalists everywhere seem to be taking a larger proportion of the initiatives, especially around the startups. And obviously, these are you know, uh, relatively risky, but at the same time, the rewards are huge. However, no matter how things turn out, I think we have very interesting days ahead. So let me again thank the Council of the CIBN and the Organizing Committee of the 14th uh, Annual Banking and Finance Conference for the very kind invitation uh, extended to me and also for the excellent arrangements that have been made to convene this meeting successfully. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you. Thank you, Your Excellency. We are appreciative. Your Excellencies, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, while we are trying to organize the stage for the group photograph, let me welcome the powerful team from Nexim Bank. The managing director of Nexim Bank is here with us, Mr. Abba Belo, and the two executive directors, Dr. Bala Belo and Honorable Stella Kotete, are also here with us. We thank you for coming. We'll try and clear the stage. We try and clear the stage very quickly so we can have the group photograph. All right, let me welcome to join His Excellency, the Vice President for the photograph here, the Governor of the Central Bank of Nigeria, the President, CIBN, and other leaders, including the First Vice President, Second Vice President, the National Treasurer, the Chairman of the Conference Consultative Forum, the Registrar and the CEO of CIBN. This will be joining His Excellency, the Vice President for the group photograph. We're gradually winding down the opening session of the 14th Annual Banking and Finance Conference holding in Abuja at the Congress Hall of the Transco Hilton with the theme Economic Recovery, Inclusion and Transformation, the Role of Banking and Finance. We've had a wonderful parade of speakers starting from President Muhammad Buhari and also President Paul Kagame of Rwanda, the CIBN President Dr. Bayo Lubemi, the Governor of Lagos State and the CBN Governor.
very much. We would like to invite Mr. Dr. Harvard Wigwe to please lead His Excellency, the Vice President, through the pavilion and the exhibition side. Your Excellency is from the visit to the exhibition site. His Excellency, the Vice President, will leave us. But we also have tea break for you upstairs, the Kano mezzanine. And immediately after the tea break, we will now go for the breakout session. We have business sessions one, two, and three. The first business session will be addressed by Mrs. Amina Mohammed, OFR, Deputy Secretary General of the United Nations. The second business session that's actually focused on inclusion will be addressed by Mr. Fola Shodun Adebisi Shonubi, SCIB, Deputy Governor Operations, Central Bank of Nigeria. And the third one on transformation will be addressed by Mr. Kalisto Sobeta, Group Executive Technology and Services, First Bank of Nigeria. Those are the business sessions immediately after tea break. If your bank was part of your life, sort of like an assistant, a buddy, and a plug. He moves out to the pavilion to witness what is on, on every stand, what the banking and financial services industry is presenting to Nigeria and all participants. And with that, we end this live transmission of the 14th Annual Banking and Finance Conference right here in Abuja and with participation from Lagos, the presidential villa, and of course, Kenya and around the world. On behalf of the entire crew here, my name is Leah Katum Baba Tunde, saying you have a wonderful day and God bless Nigeria. And welcome, it's time for another interesting package of everything music. This is Stokey Maurice. 